It's not just mine, his or her house. This is our house. Hello everyone, my name is Tyrone Lowe. This is my show, The Legends. And I wanna thank everybody that actually subscribes to my show, plays it, listen to it, and supports me all over the world. Today on The Legends, we have an 18 year old girl from Memphis. And um, she's a powerhouse and um, she has a lot of intellect with her as well. So I'm gonna bring to you on The Legends, Demi Laurel. Hi. Hey Demi. How you doing, girl? How you feeling? Great. How are you? Okay. Um, today's Mother's Day, so you can relate that to your mom. So me, tell I say happy Mother's Day. I will. I definitely will. All right. So we're going to get into it right now. So um, you're, you're based out of Memphis, and also you started singing at an early age of 11. So can you tell the viewers about that? Well, it was actually earlier than that. Um, okay. I actually started singing when I was really young, probably around kindergarten. Mm -hmm. um, I used to actually get in trouble for singing at school so much because I was singing while I was doing my work. I was singing during nap time, during recess, mm -hmm. all of that. And my teacher actually had to call my mom and say, hey, can you get your daughter? She's singing too much <laughs> like that. <laughs> and okay. yeah, uh, I've just been singing for a very long time. And that's just my passion. It's just something that I've always wanted to do and that I've always seen myself doing. So did you have an ideal artist that really um, gave you the energy and the encouragement to actually, you know, sing, you know, to give you that spark? And if you do, can you tell the viewers about that? Yes, sir. Um, my inspirations would be Michael Jackson and Beyonce. Uh, they're two of my favorite artists. I love listening to them. I've been listening to them ever since I was young. And they've just been people that I adore in the music industry. Okay. And what was so unique about them that actually gave you that attraction? The way that their fans faint every time they see them, <laughs> uh, okay. their support, their vocal abilities, their songs, just everything about them. I just love. Well, you know, I, I listen to your songs and they're very nice. Um, Thank you. I believe that somewhere along the line that you're going to go a long way. Now, we pre-talked a few, um, like yesterday, and um, I admire your intellect, your focus, and the things of that nature. Thank you. So my whole thing is that um, since you're an artist, um, what are you expecting when you give your when you give your energy to your to your to your to your to your crowd? What are you what do you really what are you looking for back as far as energy? I'm looking for people to vibe with me to to see how I am on a personal connection because I would really want my fans to be like family, you know, like not just supporters or somebody that just really um, is a fan of me, but someone as family. So yeah, I would like to get that same energy and family vibe back to me. Okay. So in high school, I mean, even though they know you're an artist, how were they actually responding to you? Well, I actually get called famous around school. They, they're they very supportive of me. Um, they support everything I do. Every time I play my music, they like it. They always be like, I'm going to add this to my playlist, all that. So, yeah, they're very supportive, and I love them for that. And I've, all I've gotten is just love. Okay. Well, I know that you're pretty much grounded with people around you to keep you focused and things mm -hmm. like that. So can you tell the viewers how – you are really focused in the people that surround you to make you, you know, make you feel like you're really adjustable to, you know, to your craft. Could you repeat the last part again? I'm sorry. Well, what I'm trying to say is that you have a good surrounding of people that actually are around you to keep you grounded mm -hmm. and keep you focused. Can you tell the viewers about that and who they are yeah. in your life? Yes. Well, my parents, of course, they're very supportive of me, my mom and my dad. They support everything that I do. They give me motivation whenever I'm not feeling it that day, probably. But yeah, they're just a big inspiration. Um, my team, 
Miriam Graham, the whole Heal the Hood Foundation, Liddell Beeman, um, Joe. Joe Mason, Natasha Clay Hill, all of them. They are just very supportive. And um, I wouldn't be here without them. <laughs> so how did it feel to actually go into a real recording studio and actually do a first recording? Can you describe the feeling behind that? It was very exciting, something new. Um, I already, I was already writing songs and just going to the studio and recording them just made it all come together. I just mm -hmm. love the way that the, my producer arranged everything mm -hmm. and it just got better from there. Um, some of the songs that you have written, are they based on any personal experiences that you've actually experienced in your lifetime? I would say I'm ready is. Uh, usually when I write love and breakup songs, I don't really go through those really because, you know, I'm still young, so I don't really know, like, how the dating thing is yet. But it's like, um, you know, like when you listen to different people's situations and mm -hmm. you listen to songs that gives you inspiration, right. they, it just comes to mind and I just write what they feel. And I'm basically like speaking out for other people. Okay. So let's talk about the Stomp City Iconic Awards. Um, do you want to tell the viewers about that and what yeah. actually what it represents? I'm going to be performing there and I'm going to be performing. A change is going to come. It's going to be very uplifting, very mm -hmm. moving. And I just can't wait to give the people that, um, that, uh, that drive to right. stay motivated. And what are they really representing? What is the message behind that? What are, what are they actually trying to, to tell it's the people? A, it's against domestic violence and gun violence. And just, you know, trying to uplift people against things like that. And it's very important for people to know and mm -hmm. to go against the violence. So you're actually portraying a message to everyone as far yeah. as that's concerned. And that's a good thing that a person at your age is actually um, encountering to give out a message because I believe that people, especially the youths, need to really hear that, right. you know, and I'm glad that you're able to, you know, acknowledge it and try to actually be part of a change. Would you right. say that's right? Yes, sir. Most definitely. So I see that somewhere along the line that you really have God in your life. And um, yes. from what I see, you know, let's talk about how what God has done for you and the things that he's doing for you and the things that you expect from him right now. God has been doing a lot for me. He's always is. Uh, he always has been. Uh, I'm a big believer of Jesus Christ ever since I was little. Ever since I was born, actually. <laughs> I wouldn't be here okay. without him. So yeah, I give a lot of I give all my I give all the credit to him. Okay. So um quickly, if you had to do something from when you started doing your actual singing from way back and you had to do it all over again, what would you think that would be? Definitely taking more opportunities and not being as shy and timid as I was back then. Because right. I'm, I'm still kind of shy now, but it's like it wasn't as bad as it was back then. So I would definitely say taking more opportunities and letting people know that I could sing, that I, that I really wanted to do this. So yeah, that would be my, if I can go back and do it all over again, I would definitely take more opportunities. Well, you know, Demi, you're, grow you're still growing up. Right. You know, um, I want to see you five years from now. I would really like to see what the outcome of, what you're going to be like as far as, you know, being a recording artist. But for right now, we're going to take a, a little break and we're going to look at your video, something that you've actually done. And I, I want you guys to actually support her on this and um, give show us some love. OK, stay tuned. We'll be right back. We got some fun people in the house tonight.
<laughs> yeah, but do you like me? Yes. But you know how boys are. I always mm. gotta play it tough. Always. I see he be looking at you. Mm. Girl, I don't even play like that. You'll see. Ready to shoot.
And we're back. This is my show, The Legends. My name is Tyrone Lowe, your host. And my guest is Demi. How you doing, Demi? I'm great. All right. So, you know, what I want to talk about is like, how do you separate your education from your craft? Because I know sometimes it just can't be easy to mm -hmm. be focused on two things at one time. So tell the viewers how you actually encountered that. Well, it's actually my senior year, my last year of high school. Mm -hmm. So I've been really doing a lot of senior stuff lately, prom, senior brunch, senior everything, graduation coming up. And uh, I've still been writing and right. I'm going to, I'm actually going to the studio next week to mm -hmm. record some new stuff. And I've got some new things that are coming in the summer. I, have a, right. I even have a song called Summertime Love. Mm -hmm. And this summer is just going to be all about music, all about performing. And I just can't wait for that. And I'm actually going to University of Memphis um, okay. this fall to study commercial music. That's my major. And so music is just going to be a part of my school life mm -hmm. and just everyday life in general. So my my thing to you is, can you tell the upcoming artists, because they still have a lot of young artists that are, that are coming up, upcoming. Um, can you actually uplift them with some type of, in, you know, um, encouragement on, you know, if they really want to have a career, what should mm -hmm. they do? And, you know, give them some good suggestions about that. Yeah, for sure. Um, people younger and aspiring artists should really just try, you know, just try everything. Just try and, you know, because you'll never know what'll happen. You know, just take a leap of faith. It doesn't matter what this person thinks or what this other person thinks, do what you mm -hmm. love, do what your, what your passion is. And because if you don't, you, you're you going to hate like what what else you, whatever else you do. Okay. So they just stick to Dem their past. Demi, are you writing for other artists as well? You know, besides Not yourself? Yet. So Not let's, yet. So um, let's talk about that. Yeah, so um, I haven't written for other artists yet. I would love to. Like, you know, artists that are bigger than me and even artists that you know needs a little help with writing i would definitely like to help them because even um i get a little uh stuck sometimes right. but you know i just get motivation from like other artists i usually watch like documentaries and stuff and i know that they usually have ghost writers but mm -hmm. i haven't had a ghost writer i just really wrote my own thing mm -hmm. but yeah i would definitely like to write for other people okay now you sing r b as i am i correct Yes, sir. So you ever thought about going into another gyra as far as it, your your writing and what would that what would that be? It would definitely be, be pop. Okay. Uh, yeah, that Michael Jackson, uh, Bruno Mars type vibe. Yeah. Right. Pop most definitely. Well, that's kind of cool, you know. Um, so does Memphis have a different sound than other? You know, do they have their own original sound than other? you know, other regions, or do you feel that Memphis just has its own sound? Yes, most de most definitely Memphis have its own sound, uh, from the rappers to the, because, you know, we're the home of the blues. So, uh, yeah, it's just different than, you know, all the R&B, the pop. We just have a whole different sound down here, and I feel like we have a lot of potential. That's great. And, you know, we forgot to mention, you know, the award show, which is going to consist of Lisa Ray, Darren Henson, Clifton Powell, Vicky Winan, and a whole lot more. How do you feel about being around those, you know, those high celebrity types? Man, it's great. I mean, I just can't wait to see them all and just get inspired and get motivated by them. And I would just like to ask a lot of them for advice as a young aspiring artist. So yeah, that'd be very exciting for me. I, and I feel very enthusiastic just to be around and work with them. Well, I, I, I really feel like God is really working with you, you know, as Thank far you. as um, what you're doing. And, and then again, you know, um, giving a positive outlet on it against some of the problematic things that's happening around, you know, and right. I hope that at this point when you do it, that it really, really applies to a lot of people that's really, you know, that's going through a whole lot of right. stuff right now. You know, um, so any shout outs to anyone, you know, that you really want to acknowledge, you know, that, um, you know, that you want to, you know, have, take yeah. credit for what you're doing right now? 
So first I would like to shout out my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay. Then I would just shout out my parents, the whole Hill of Hood Foundation, Ladell Beeman, Miriam Graham, Natasha Clay Hill, uh, Anthony Milch, John, Joe Mason, all of my friends, all of my, all the people that adore and support me, and even you guys. Okay, thank you. So you have a new track out, and let's tell the viewers about it, the name of it, and who gets the credit for it, and what's going on with it right now? My my new single is Flashbacks. Mm -hmm. uh, it's written by me, arranged by me, and my uh, arranger, Prince DJ. Mm -hmm. And this song is basically just about having flashbacks of a past relationship, a past fling that you had that makes you like, just, it's kind of, I want to say traumatizing, but uh -huh. like something that you've been through <laughs> and like you don't want to go through it again, basically. So yeah, that's what flashbacks is about. So you're, you're actually saying that you're paying homage to people that can identify with it, that's right. been through it. Right. So you came up with sort of like a solution in a sense, right? Yeah, I would say <laughs> that, yeah. That's actually good. I'll, I'll use that. I'm gonna oh, you're going to use it? Right. Watch that now. <laughs> I'll, give you, I'll give you credit. I'll give you credit, of course. But yeah, I'm going to use that um, solution. I'm, I'm very flattered to have you on my show, and um, I'm really impressed with who you are and what you're actually trying to do. And you're taking it to an extreme, you know, right now, as far as your career is concerned. Let me ask you a question. You know, um, you're only 18 and you're still growing, you're still maturing mm -hmm. and you're still progressing. Where do you feel you want to be at least five years from now? And where would you, you know, where would you think that they'll act, that line will be drawn for you to say to yourself, Demi, job well done? Yes, sir. Uh, in five years, I would definitely see myself going on tour, making more music, making albums, uh, winning awards like Grammys, Oscars, MTV Awards, BET Awards, just being nominated and winning all of those. And because I also want to get into film and video, I want to mm -hmm. be a director because I love watching, I mean, I love writing movie scripts and TV scripts. And I would like to see my own show or me being starred in one of my shows. So briefly, you have some experience with TV because you've done some things. Can you tell the viewers briefly about some of the stuff that you've done uh, on screen? Yeah, so a few years ago, I was on Miss T's Music Factory. It was a reality TV show. It was mm -hmm. um, artist development. And we would uh, go to different places and sing. And we would compete for, this, uh, for who gets to sing for that week. And I was also in three plays. Uh, it, the morning on the morning train by Ron Gephardt. Um, first sight by Ruby O'Gray, and this one that I've recently been in called "When No One's Listening" by by Natasha Hill. Okay. Well, you know, Demi, it's been a pleasure, and I mean a pleasure to have you on my show. Um, I'm going to give you a special invite to come back again. You know, somewhere yes, along the future. Yeah. And this has been another T Low video production. This is my guest, Demi Laurel. Get out there, support her. And um, you guys stay tuned for another episode. See you guys later. It's not just mine, it's all her house. This is our house. We got some fun people in the house tonight.
like Worried about what you up to What's going on in your mind I can't be trapped here forever I deserve better We can't even be together Fun people in the house tonight. This is our house. UNICEF Kid Power is offering free online dance and exercise videos with a twist. Kids stuck at home can get active and save lives locally and around the world. Sign up for free at unicefkidpower.org. It's not just mine, his or her house. This is our house. 